So in this video, I want to follow up and show you and give you a tour of the app that I use to put scores and everything when I'm live streaming different type of sporting events from Little League all the way up to high school stuff. And that is Live Score app. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So how is this tied to media ministry? Well, to be quite honest with you, live streaming sporting events actually started from the media ministry where I wanted to take our equipment with us and go to some of the sporting events of the youth here at the church and record it and present it kind of like in a mini ESPN for highlights for our church members who couldn't go and um, see their games. And it was just a way of coming up with other content to broaden the breadth of what we do here and to highlight some of our youth athletes in the church. So while doing that, I ended up coming across this app and it's really cool and i wanted to show that with show that to you so let's go ahead and cut over here to my desktop all right so here is live score if we go ahead and double click on that all right here's live score as they say the professional sports team software and like i said i really like this app um, it has really solved so many issues because there are a bunch of things that I've tried to use before and it just didn't do right, but they really get their stuff together. Now, I do not have the professional version. The professional version of the software is like $1,200, um, but each individual module of a sport you can pay for. So I have football and basketball for right now. So let's go into football. All right, so the first thing we have is it's a very nice layout. You can change your colors and all this other stuff, and you have different type of components that you can put on here. So I'm going to close this console here because I really don't use that. So let's just go through the left and then come back up. Now, this goes back into what I talked about with my portable system and why I wanted to shrink it. This component right here is your connection stuff to where I can use the separate um, iPad app to control everything with this and that's the reason why I use this mini router to have my own little network for the computer and the iPad so they can talk to each other. So you can come in here set the password to whatever you want or you can come in here and use a QR code to connect to it, it makes it real simple. Um, I just have this to where I can remotely control all of the aspects of this. Now I filled this, filled this out with some <laughs> just some filler information. I, my normal high school rivalry with EC Glass High School and Heritage High School in Lynchburg. Um, so in here, you can put the short name, as you can see. You can put the full name. You can even put a logo in here if you wanted to. Sometimes I do that and it'll actually show up, I think like right here and right there, something like that. Um, now, again, this changes based on the sport that you're using, but you can change your time, overtime, um, you can do line of scrimmage, all this other stuff, auto, auto time, stop, start, I think that's something new, what did that say? Automatically stops the game time on certain events like scores and flags. Oh, that's new. You normally used to have to stop this all the time. Um, then you have submit, and that would say, um, send these changes over. Now, based on the lower third that you pick or your scoreboard, that will change what can show. So like I have the full names, but they don't show up because this one is only for the short name. Sometimes I put the initials, sometimes I put the mascot. It just depends on the size of it. All right. Now on the left, you have your active layout. So if we come in here and click plus, it will pull up equivalent lower third scoreboards for the given sport that you selected. So in here, if we click on here, see it gives us different examples of scoreboards that you can use. I'm using number two. See they have three, and let's make this bigger so you can see what the whole thing looks like. This is the one I used to use, and sometimes I might switch back to that because it just gives me a little bit more space. See the logo would actually show up right there if I used it. 
and then number four. So, and that gives way less space. Now, I really haven't messed with it that much, but you can come in here and edit a lot of these and change the colors on them. Um, I actually did that with this one. I actually changed these to um, my predominant colors of Formation Sports. And, you know, you can play around with that. Now, lower thirds are pretty much, you can, I haven't really used these because I normally didn't have access to the team or the players or the numbers and all this other stuff like that. If I had more manpower, I would actually do that, but it's good that that's there and available. Now there are scoreboards based on each sport that you pick, so they don't always look the same. Now, if you use the multi-sport component to this, I think it's kind of generic enough that you can use, make it with any sport that you want, but that's it. Now, as you can see, they normally have all of these components are turned on but based off of what I use them for see I don't do that so you have who has possession the quarter down yards where the ball is the clock all this other stuff now based on normally this was a one-man show I don't track all that stuff so mainly what I do is I really don't even I can keep timeouts because that's easy and I don't do time so that's why I have mine pretty much like this now, like I said, you can come in here and edit colors if you want it to, change any aspect that you want, save it as a profile, it makes it easy to come back up again. And then you can zoom in and out and this changes the perspective of, well, we'll show you what that does <laughs> later. So let's say, let's leave it around like 207. Now I set my background to green. Now there's a reason why I do this. And then we have safety mouse and animations um, and stuff like that. This one really doesn't have the animations, but I can leave that on there. And that's pretty much it. Now, if we go here to our view, we already have all of these you're really seeing except for the sports console. Oh, and they actually do have a lower third console control panel, that's new. So let's look at this first. This is what I normally would use and you can, once you move this, you can dock it wherever you want. So this is how you would control everything. So if we start the game, now we have access to all of everything. Here's the possession. This would change everything here. You know, you can change the quarter from here. You can do add time, but I'm not doing time here. That's like you can stop and start the clock if you wanted to, reset, set it to a specific number. Um, you can toggle the scoreboard to show it oh this is this is a lot better um they actually didn't have this and i used to actually make an uh, animation here for a touchdown so this will make this a lot simpler um, you can add your points and all that other stuff right here and change your downs all the stuff so most of this like i said i don't mess with this i normally only do the score and the quarter and I'll put a penalty flag up if it's something like that. All of this can be controlled from the iPad, so I'm not using the mouse to do this. I just tap a button. Now, if I had this as a touch screen, I think they have a portable screen as a touch screen. This will work great too. But I use the iPad separately for this main purpose instead of having two screens. But now that I think about it, the iPad is a second screen. I might have to look into a touch screen version of that. But Let's go back to some other stuff. And it looks like they added something in this new update, the lower third control panel. Okay, so that makes it a whole lot easier to use those um, lower thirds that we were using before. So that makes it real easy that you can type this in, things like that, and just submit it. So that's cool, I'm glad they added that. Now the other thing I like about this program, it has functionality with the Dectronics or Datatronics, whichever one is called. Um, yeah, Dactronics. That's normally the universal box that they use to connect to scoreboards. Now, I haven't purchased it, but what you could do is if you're using this and you have that module, you can connect this software to the Dactronic box. So whoever's the official scorekeeper, whatever changes they make, it will show up on this app. So you don't even need to do that at all. So I would love to actually do that um, 
in the future. Maybe I'll do it this season if I can get access to that. And I really need to find out what stadiums, what they're using, and do I have access to connect to that. But that's something that's in the future would be really cool because you do that, you don't have to do nothing. You can turn everything on and the official scorekeeper would update this. You would just probably put the team's name in and something like that. And I don't even know if that carry it over too, but that's kind of cool that you can do that. So let's go over here to our settings and show you what else you can do. So you can show the grid in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, that's just for you. You have audio, so you can actually <laughs> loop this through and you can have an air horn on given when you do a touchdown and you can set all that stuff up if you want it to. I personally don't use that. You can set the output of the audio. As you can see, I'm going through the black magic um, HDMI out, which I'm connected to my A10 mini for that. Um, this is a pro feature where you can change the layout based on your user. Um, import sources is another one. This is the Dactronics like I was talking about where you can set this up where it will bring in everything. So if I come here to football, see it will bring in quarters, score for home and away, the game clock, downs, yards, lines of scrimmage, possession. It will bring all of that over, which would be really cool. But like I said, um, you would need to get the, it goes over a serial port. So since this computer doesn't have one, I would have to probably do like a USB emulator or something like that. Uh, it also has plug-in for X keys. Again, I don't use X keys. I actually use a stream deck with this, but that would be cool. But again, it's locked behind. Um, oh, actually it's not locked behind a pro feature. So that's cool. So if I had the X keys, I can actually do this and wouldn't really even need an iPad to do it. I mean, I would have another little box here. I might think about doing that because the X keys, I use my stream deck to control the live stream as well, mainly just for the live stream and whatever graphics that I do. Now, X keys will work with OBS is what I use for live streaming. And if I had this, that would be cool. So it says available with sports package or full edition. So if I got an X keys, actually this would work. I might, I might look at doing something like that because that would make that really cool. So X keys, I can link this to control two commands at the same time. I think I might do that later. All right, and then there is a stat crew import source to where kind of the same way you can import scores and things like that if somebody else is using stat crew to import all this information. So that makes that work as well too. And that's it. Now, output rendering, this is another feature you can output as an image, XML output text. Um, I don't know right now why I would use that. I guess you could put this to a static image to a page if you wanted to. So you can take a snapshot or something like that. I don't know. Um, oh, okay, I guess I can think of this, but this, this is a pro feature. So say for example, you wanted to use this with a green screen and push it somewhere and it's a flat image. I can understand that. XML, I guess if you're using some code or reader, to pull that information or text, that's the reason why you would do that. I'm not using that because the very next feature is what I'm using. This is NDI, so I am broadcasting from the same system to OBS over NDI and it pulls this perfectly. This is the reason why I have a green background. So you can set the resolution, set the name of it, enable it and use low performance mode if you want to. But again, this system Again, the Desk Mini is more than powerful enough to handle the stream and this at the same time. As you can see, it's saying it's using 19%. It ain't using that much. But either way, I still got a bunch of headroom for that. FTP ticker, same way. It's You can upload this stuff to an FTP server if you wanted to. It's locked behind a professional um, full purchase of this uh, program. And then you have web widgets that you could actually post this to a website and it will show stats for the game that's going live that you're doing. Again, that's locked behind a pro feature. All right, so this is how this works. So now I'm gonna have this game start and let's minimize this. 
Now, I don't know if this is going to let me open up a second one without crashing OBS because I'm running it already. Okay, it's not crashing yet. If it crashes, I'm just letting you know that's the reason why. So in here, I have the live score set up. It's the NDI and I'm pulling in the image as you can see. Now, if I change the zoom inside of this program, it will actually um, change the size of here. So I can change the size through the live score app or in OBS, it all depends. So let's go ahead and show the screen and see I have it right here. Now, if I come back in here and let's say we were at 200, let's say we put it up to 300. As you can see, see it changed the size of this. So that's up to you on whichever way that you want to do it, but it's really cool. So as you can see, we already in the fourth quarter. Let's go ahead and reset that back. And this is the reason why I like doing this as a second screen instead of keep bringing this up. All right. Let's see, we're back at the first. So I locked that in place and actually this change the size of this. Let's keep this always on top. Let's see, as you can see, it adjusts in real time, relatively in real time. So I normally would have my stuff right there or up here, up and out of the way, any way that you want, and boom. And again, it, I didn't really add any filters in here. I guess it's automatically just sending over this color this way, which is cool. Normally, if it did show up, you can come in here, add a filter on this, and do a color key or a chroma key. That's the reason why I use green, because it's already set. And it will just wipe out that color and you'll get this effect. But they must have did something new, because normally I had to do this to get this out of the way. So let me close this one, and then I'm gonna bring up the live score on the recording I'm doing right now. And as you can see, that's where we have our score there. So really, really cool on how this all works. And as you can see, score would maintain because it's all in OBS where it stays up until I bring it down. Now that's the reason why I use the Stream Deck to hide this but they actually have that functionality inside the app now. So I can click here and say, we do a touchdown, boom, touchdown, yay. And, or we can toggle this away and then just press this button and bring it right back. I normally did this as a different scene in OBS where I just had the scene turned off. So it could be done either way. So. Let's stop this and let's go back to the desktop one more time. And here's the website. Like I said, they do offer a free version. And like I said, it has a iPad and iPhone remote. I wish they would have an Android one, but they, that's just where they're at right now. Um, pretty much talked about everything here that they offer. This is the app that I have that controls everything really cool and like I said lower thirds you can make all this other stuff they've added a bunch of other things here which is cool they support a whole bunch of sports and you can always submit some more so if we go in here and look at the products like I said let's put this in US so this whole thing is almost around like $1,200 for the full package. But again, it depends on what you're doing. I think it'll be worth it. But like I said, I bought the individual one for football and for basketball. Oh, actually, I think I got multi-sport as well too and basketball. So that's really cool. They even do have MMA and stuff like that as well too. So that's really cool. So with the multi-sport, for the most part, I can make whatever sport that I need if it's not covered. Right now, we've only been doing basketball and football, but we actually have an opportunity to do bowling here pretty soon. So I think that would be cool. Maybe I'll submit that 
<laughs> but like I said, really like this app. It's really helped out a lot because we I used to actually add all the scores and stuff after the game was over, which was very, very, very tedious to do. Um, pretty much had to watch the whole game all over again. This way, when I'm adding the score, it's being embedded in the live video, whether I'm live streaming it or recording it, so I don't have to go back and do that. The really the only thing I need to do is cut out some of the fluff of dead time that nobody's really doing anything, intros and outros, put credits, and all this other fancy stuff in there. So that's about it. So I hope you like this for the people who wanted to know about it. Check it out at livescoreapp.com, hyphen in between each word. <laughs> that's uh, Hopefully that's an in-depth review of this. Basketball is the exact same way. It just changes the features available to the sport. That's about it. Functionality is exactly the same. So anyway, if you like this type of content, I would appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry, or we're just doing different reviews of other stuff to enhance live streaming, not just in your church, but any other aspect of live streaming that you may be doing. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.